This audiobook is for educational purposes and is for personal use only. God Never Fails Part 4 to 6 by Mary Cupfill. 4. Fear Not. If someone were to ask me what I consider the most helpful in overcoming physical, mental, or bodily ills, I believe my answer would be the overcoming of fear concerning those ills. Fear, defined by Webster as the painful emotion marked by alarm, dread, disquiet, is the basis for the prolongation of most difficulties experienced by man. Yet, because fear is an emotion, it is rightfully subject to man, not man to it. A friend wrote recently, I want so much to have faith and understanding, but I am fearful and I cannot seem to overcome the fear. My friend's situation is similar to that of thousands of others who are confronted with appearances of physical disturbances and negation. The first reaction to such appearances is dread of what they may mean, the focusing of the imagination upon what impending danger or evil they may bring. Right at this point we need to take a definite stand, we need to recognize the truth that we are children of God and, as such, we have been given dominion over all the earth according to his word and promise. How do we go about taking this stand? The same way Paul did, by saying, none of these things move me. The same way David did, by declaring, in God have I put my trust, I will not be afraid. The same way Daniel did, by turning from the lion-like evidence to the light of truth. The same way Job did, by searching with all his heart for the good within the very darkest of appearances. The same way the Master did, by declaring, Get thee hence, Satan, and turning to the Father within. You and I are no different from many of these individuals, for we are all children of the same God. We have no less authority than they had, we only need to claim our authority and practice outwardly our inner beliefs in a bolder fashion. If we need to tap our feet and speak aloud to ourselves to prove our belief and authority, then let us do so. If we need to sit in silence and pray more often than we have in the past, then let us do so. It is just such action that relegates fear to its native background of impotency. If we believe that fear has only the power we give it, then let us refuse it any place in our lives. Think deeply about this for a moment. Why do you suppose it was so simple for those who came to the Master to receive the desired healing? Was it not because, in His presence, they were no longer fearful of the claim of evil in their lives? Think for a moment what your attitude would be, if you had opportunity today to stand before Jesus. Would you not be filled with limitless love for this leader who proved his mastery through innumerable outer works? Would you not be instantly convinced that he had power to proclaim good for you? Coming into his presence, you might be inclined to kneel with bowed head before the radiant light shining from his countenance. You would suddenly realize what he so surely knows that the only power and presence in all the universe is God, that anything appearing to the contrary is of no importance, not real, and, therefore, not to be feared. Your fear of the condition or the problem would fall from you because of the overwhelming awareness of his love and his power. Then, as you worshipped in silence and in thankfulness, perhaps he would quietly remind you that it is the Father within, not his personal self, that, doth his works. He would tell you that you are a son of the Most High, possessing all the characteristics of the Christ nature, able to prove the same works and even greater ones. He would bid you arise out of the consciousness of disbelief with the words, Fear not, only believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. It would be impossible to fear anything however frightening in appearance, before the light of such calm assurance and divine authority. Now, dear friend, this light of assurance and authority can be ours today through our inheritance of the Christ Self. This light of dominion did not fade with the crucifixion of the man Jesus. It has, instead, grown brighter and stronger. Every trial of mental or physical negation in our lives is but another period of crucifixion, and we must remember the importance of the event following, the resurrection, and accept the truth that we, too, through our spiritual sonship, can arise to receive our rightful heritage of good. We must arise and proclaim daily this dominion of Christhood, 
which is inherently our own. By thought and word and action we enforce this spiritual proclamation until our entire inner being accepts it for the truth it is, and perfection is manifested in our lives and affairs. It was no easier for Jesus to do this than for any other man, except that his earnestness and love were supreme. When you become as sincere as he, when you are as faithful as he, when you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and mind and might as he, then you, too, move toward the expression of your Christ dominion. And as you begin walking in the right direction, through strong and positive thoughts and words and actions, you shall find all things about you moving in the same direction toward your increasing good. When my fearful friend who desired faith and understanding took the necessary stand of authority, refused to accept fear and its implications, and proclaimed her dominion as a child of the Most High, the appearances became unimportant and began to fade. It is always this way. When we proclaim by positive thought and word and action that which is truth, the surrounding appearances of evil and terror and negation suddenly lose the power we have given them and fade into nothingness. Perhaps something is troubling you at this time, something that has been persistent, obstinate, seemingly unresponsive to your declarations of truth. If a negative condition harasses you, use a clear, strong, definite rebuke regarding its appearance of power. Don't ignore it or push it into the background of your mind. Rather, face it squarely, bring it to light, and say calmly but determinedly, be cast out. You are a liar. You came forth from nothing, you are nothing. You have no power of your own, and I will not lend power to you. Get out and stay out. Each time the appearance makes itself known to you, arise and rebuke it with dignity, power, and spiritual authority as did Jesus. You have this same dominion over the elements, over the demons of humanness, that Jesus himself possessed through the divine sonship. You, too are a son of the living God. You, too, can command the undesirable to depart and be no more, even as Jesus set the example. As you persist, as you are watchful and alert and continue in prayer, you will find that there arises within you a Christ-like authority that makes known to you your innate ability to follow in Jesus' footsteps. You will realize that it is not by any human force the negation is dissolved, the good brought forth but that by the all-powerful Spirit finding free expression through you the work is accomplished. Each time you arise, each time you take the stand of Christ-like dominion, blessings will follow. You will realize a great calm in your mind and heart concerning all false appearances, each time you let God work in and through you to bring forth good. You will find all demoniac trials hold nothing but gain and progress that all feverish conditions promise nothing but purity and refreshment for the awakening of new spiritual values and material enrichment. Even though it may seem that you can never attain true Christ mastery, even though the burden of fear seems to weigh as heavily as ever after you have put forth an effort to overcome it, do not give up. Refuse to give up. What if Peter, after his miserable failures at steadfastness and faith had not continued trying? he did sink into the depths for a time, but he put forth another effort, tried again, went forward another step, and then found that which he sought inner authority, spiritual dominion and thereby brought light to thousands along the way. It is not a gay, carefree life devoid of all trial and difficulties that promotes and urges the accomplishment of the high goal. All the persons in the past who have brought light and inspiration to their fellow men have known darkness and terror along the road, and the very urgency and desperation of their struggles has been transformed into an uplifting force for their highest good. Those who have spoken the most inspirational words, written the most glorious themes have undergone the most discouraging temptations, the most disheartening experiences. A friend once said, it is this very fright and fear that have brought me the greatest faith and deepest understanding. When will you and I begin to awaken, so that we can say the same? Not because we must become like Jesus or David or Job or Paul, but because we are like them, because we are all children of God, one Father Mother, Creator, and Sustainer of all. 
because we already have inherited the same spirit of courage and power, authority and discipline, the same capacity for limitless love. Though the mountains tremble and be cast into the sea, though the earth shake and grumble beneath our feet and before our eyes, let us not be moved, but rather stand fast on the firm ground of the truth that we are sons of God, created with power and authority and dominion from the very beginning. Right now you are the steadfast and immovable and triumphant person you want to be. Right now you are the poised and calm and undisturbed person you desire to be. This is your heritage, dear one, not something to be put off until everything about your life and affairs is different. You are the one to take command, and through this very act will the outward appearances change from darkness to light. You are a splendid and triumphant and glorious child of God now. There is nothing in all the universe that will not respond to this exercise of dominion. Believe this and act upon this belief, and nothing can prevent your victorious overcoming. You are a son of God, strong and free in the power of his might. Meditation for Self-Help Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace, thereby good shall come unto thee. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be fearful. This same peace is now within you, beloved, just as it was within our Lord Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry. It now fills your spirit, soul, and body with the calm and joy that passeth all understanding. It is the same landscape in a gossamer veil of moonlight the same peace that fills the hush before the dawn, when all the world awaits in silence the glory of the rising sun, come to bless the earth with life and strength, peace that fills the night with soft beauty, enfolding the same peace that flows across the broad, shining acres of golden waving grain, the same peace that whispers gentle notes of love among rustling leaves in wooded dells, the same peace that settles softly and gracefully with each perfectly formed snowflake, the same peace that twinkles silently across millions of miles from the myriad blue, red, and silver stars in the heavens, the peace that accompanies the perfect rhythm of the tide rising and falling on rocky beach and sandy shore, the peace that smiles from placid depths of quiet lakes, that flows with sureness and purpose as the rivers journey to meet the open sea, that glimmers in sparkling raindrops refreshing all living things. All nature joins in the perfect, harmonious melody of peace that arises from true communion with the Creator, who made the world and pronounced it good. Listen to its quiet song of love. It fills all space and blesses all who hear. His peace, beloved, enfolds you now, encompasses your every day, surrounds your loved ones, and blesses every situation, permeates your mind and body with the joyous radiant knowledge that God is in charge and all is well. Finally, Brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honorable, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. 5. Give up to God. If there is a problem of health, supply, or harmony facing you, one you have tried steadfastly and sincerely to solve for some time without success, pray once more as the Master taught, then turn the whole burden over to God. Do this not in an attitude of discouragement and failure and weariness, but in an attitude of willingness to let go, to give up to God. For many of us, personal pride and human willfulness stand in the way of progress blocking and impending the easy acceptance of our heritage of all good. This was made startlingly clear to me during a prolonged time of inability to convince another of his spiritual birthright of happiness and peace. One morning, after earnest and humble prayer, a voice suddenly spoke strongly and clearly from within saying, You have nothing, personally, to do with this. Forget yourself, forget this frustration and effort. Be willing to lean upon the one who giveth the increase, the Father, the one who doth the work. 
I knew then that my mistake had been dependence on human knowledge instead of on spirit, on human effort rather than on the zeal of Jehovah of hosts. This awakening marked the beginning of progress and understanding for all concerned. Many, many times since then this inner advice has been repeated when I have found myself becoming anxious or tense about a negative situation. Fretting and stewing and conniving do not draw us closer to our good, to greater wholeness of body, illumination of mind, harmony of affairs. Such attitudes only delay and hinder the good results we seek, while willingness, cooperativeness, and expectation hasten our receiving of the blessings desired. When we add to this willingness and cooperativeness, faith in the infinitely wise Father, there is no limit to the good we may claim and receive. Only when a personal, human self becomes willing in consciousness to, sit down in the lowest place, can the still small voice of God be heard saying, Friend, go up higher, then shalt thou have glory in the presence of all that sit at meat with thee. For every one that exalteth himself shall be humbled, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. This is the direct and unmistakable advice of the wisest of all teachers as given in his parable concerning those who desired to be seated in the most honorable place at a marriage feast. In this parable we can see what he wants us to understand, that only through our willingness to humble our worldly thought, to, sit down in the lowest place, can we find the real self, the Christ self, which is worthy of the highest place the place where we can behold and receive the full glory and honor of our heritage. How can humbling ourselves help us realize perfect health? By humbling every thought regarding man-made laws of physical health, by humbling human reasoning and argument, by humbling our consciousness from the creator of perfect wholeness we permit the arising of the Christ self within, the self that knows but one source of perfection. As we become wholly meek and humble we neither condemn nor accuse nor argue concerning the appearance of things, but are simply ready to listen for the guidance of that inner real self which knows itself to be, greater, than he, that is in the world. If your problem now concerns health, let go of resistance to the appearance of ill health, let go of all personal struggle, and give up to God wholly and completely your whole being, your very life. You humanly, have nothing to do with the creation and sustenance of this life. This is God's work, God's idea, and he will not fail to fulfill it according to his highest desire of good for you. If your problem concerns success or attainment, let go of rebellion against obstacles and failure, let go of all personal striving and give up to God wholly and completely your deepest desires, your most heartfelt aspirations. You, humanly have little to do with the development and fruition of your fondest dreams. This is God's work, his increase, and he will not fail to fulfill it. Hourly we have opportunity to put into practice the rewarding spirit of willingness, and daily learning that willingness in small things will help to prevent the disease of willfulness in major situations. Willingness is interpreted to mean being, favorably disposed in mind. So we must, in day-by-day -day tasks and prayers, be favorably disposed, in thought and heart toward God. We must let him give the increase, while we watch and pray, doing all things lovingly and without reluctance. No matter how rushed we feel, no matter how urgent any matter appears, and no matter how confused the issues of our life seem to be, let us take a few minutes right now to tell the Father, I rest in thee. I wait for thee. Thou shalt bring it to pass. Let the whole body become relaxed. We can do this without anyone else's being aware of it, so we need not postpone it to some other time or place. As we feel ourselves letting go of the tension, we repeat the affirmation, either silently or aloud, slowly, calmly, and with faith, placing emphasis upon the words rest, wait, and thou. As we repeat this procedure seven times, with a slight pause between each declaration, Upon the seventh repetition, let us stop, be still, relax, and let go still more completely, clearing our mind of all thought activity. Let us just be still. If we do this once, we shall find immediate release from the anxiety and tension that have plagued us. If we do it a second time, we shall find ourselves becoming more confident and as sure and faith-filled. 
as we keep it up, exercising, and practicing throughout the day in this manner, we shall find the whole attitude changed, the body eased of all tightness, and the entire aspect of the situation altered. Indeed, thou shalt forget thy misery, as waters that are passed away. So it is, beloved friend, that as we admit our seeming failures and mistakes, become humble and willing as a little one. We draw nearer in consciousness to the heavenly kingdom, nearer to the realization that God's will for us is one of beauty, joy, wisdom, and love. We begin to understand that in giving up our own personal will, in giving up to God, our ways are made straight and smooth, our burdens light, our paths joyous. Giving up to God, is not an attitude of subjection but of faith and courage. It means having faith in the Father who doth his works and, giveth the increase. It means having courage to give up personal pride, limited selfish desires and beliefs, for the conviction that the divine will is a supreme design for good, for joyous attainment. The Father has more happiness and peace and love, greater fulfillment and satisfaction for us, than he can imagine. But we must learn, through humility, meekness, and willingness to accept this treasure. Someone once said, Man would rather refuse the gifts of God than admit his mistakes. Yes, beloved, we need to pray daily as the Master taught, forgive us our debts, in order to humble the personal self into quiet acceptance of truth. The more humble we become, the more Christ power we find within, the more meek we become, the greater the life we discover within, the more ready we become to give up to the divine will the more perfect the fulfillment of our greatest dreams and desires. Begin now, dear friend, to know, the God of thy Father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. Begin now to give up all insistence upon the attainment of your goal according to your human plan. Give up all to God and rest in the complete ease and peace of willingness. The Father has a way you know not of to show you the wonders of his love, the joys of his perfect plan for you. Relax and rejoice, child of God, for, the zeal of Jehovah of hosts will perform this. Meditation for self-help when you have gone as hard as you can go all day long, when fears for loved ones have beset and harried you, when courage seems to have failed and all the worries of the day have crowded tensely into the nooks and crannies of your being, when you wonder how you can ever take another step, smile another smile. Lend another helping hand then take a moment to be still and listen for your father's voice. Sit quietly and relax every part of your body. Imagine a curtain of rich black velvet before your eyes, picture God's great spirit of peace flowing through every muscle, every organ, every cell. Peace, peace. Whisper it softly, lovingly, repeating it, peace, peace. I am filled with whole, complete, and perfect peace. My eyes see peace, my ears hear peace, my lips speak peace, my whole being radiates infinite, omnipresent peace. From tip to toe I am the perfect expression of peace. It cleanses, heals, purifies, renews, and vitalizes me now. I am peace. Then let go and let God, and listen in perfect, receptive stillness for his voice. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, will be yours. I know, for I have done just this in the very midst of work at the office, after a crowded, hurried day, when angered by a disturbing situation, when fearful of the bigness of life, when frightened about the safety of a loved one. Declaring God's peace soothes mind and body, calms the spirit, and brings not only complete and wonderful peace, but a strength and courage unknown before. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Perfect peace is yours. Take it, use it. It is God's gift to a beloved son, awaiting your acceptance. It is part of the Father's lavish and abundant love poured out upon those who are willing to receive, to use, and to give. 6. Simple Prayer Perhaps you are now saying, Yes. I agree that I should relax and let go of the difficulty and let God do the work, but how am I going to be able to do this when outer difficulties press upon me and the need is so desperate, so urgent? How can I relax and let go, 
and pray easy as you say. Several years ago, while I was talking with a loved friend and truth teacher, she mentioned that she seldom asked the Father for anything when in need, but, instead, used often the simpler words, Father, I'm trusting, she used them when she did her studying, as she went about helping others arise out of their difficulties, as she carried out her daily tasks and household duties, repeating the words either silently or aloud with calmness and assurance. When I encountered a personal trial a short time after this, these words returned to me with new emphasis and meaning. When I repeated them in a quiet, but firm, manner, the burden was lifted and the problem solved. In other instances that followed, I again used this little prayer, and as a result the desired household article was supplied unexpectedly, I received as a gift two beautiful new suits, longed for flowers for the yard materialized, an ink spot came out of a dress after I had been told it could not be removed, an important telephone call was completed in spite of seeming obstacles, I was able to procure an automobile when none seemed available. Perhaps you think your problems are more complicated and difficult and involved than mine, that you cannot accomplish the desired miracle of healing or harmony or supply with such a small and simple prayer. No matter what your problem, no matter how great or small its size, the Father never fails. But we must turn to Him in order to receive His blessing. This is what the little prayer, Father, I'm trusting, helps us to do. It turns us our thought and attention, to Him, to the One who is the source of all our good, the Creator of all good, the Father of our being. Most of us rise above our difficulties through persistent small prayers rather than a single big soul sweeping one. The turning of the moment is the important thing, and this turning of our attention to God, the all-powerful indwelling and ever-present God, is the way we find Him and the solution to our problem. The more often we turn to Him the more often we are consciously with Him, and the more we are consciously with Him the more like Him we consciously become, manifesting perfection in mind, body, and affairs. There is nothing so deeply embedded in your consciousness that it cannot be removed, whether it concerns a problem of health and wholeness, or supply, or human relations. As you begin to say, Father, I'm trusting, you begin your acquaintanceship with the Most High, and find Him very near even within you, as the strength of your heart, the guidance you desire, and the light of inspiration. This practice of speaking simple prayers does not mean that periods of silent prayer and meditation are not of great value and necessary, for no one can grow in spiritual stature and grace without such practice. But by holding to a small prayer such as, Father, I'm trusting, throughout the day. We form the habit of consciously taking God into every moment of our day, becoming aware of His presence within every moment of our day. A truth teacher said recently, when you begin to invest 100% of yourself in God, you will begin to find the 100% returns you are looking for. When we begin to invest all of ourselves, 100% of our thoughts and words and actions, in God, the all are good we shall find that we express the fullness of God, and we shall find the truth and perfection of the kingdom coming into evidence in our life. A young woman, down to her last dime, read the words, In God we trust, inscribed on the small silver coin, and her renewed faith encouraged and enabled her to secure the position she so desperately needed. Hundreds of times before that moment the silver pieces had passed through her hands, the words unnoticed. How often the infinite treasures of God's kingdom pass us by unnoticed. Our seeming inability to receive an answer to a prayer is many times due to our unwillingness to accept the answer that is simplest and the most obvious. Perhaps, at other times, there seems to be no response to our prayer because we pray that the Father may give us exactly the kind of answer we want to receive. Perhaps we even tell him the answer we desire him to return to us as reassurance that our human deductions are correct. Or, perhaps in another instance, we tell him how the situation must be handled, or we inform him of the time element involved, or of what we think the other persons concerned must be made to do in order that the answer meet with our approval as though we have forgotten that he is the author of infinite wisdom. 
When a divinely simple answer comes that would have us renew or transform our own minds do we refuse to accept it as the true answer to our prayer because we would rather have other persons do the changing. When the, still small voice, speaks calmly within our hearts, telling us to be more patient, more trusing, to proceed with our day's activities in a spirit of thankfulness. Do we overlook this inner counsel as the true answer to our prayer because of its simplicity? When the clear truth concerning a condition we have prayed about dawns within our consciousness do we hesitate to accept it as the true answer to our prayer if outer appearances continue for a time to belie the spiritual revelation? We want God's answer, but we oftentimes hold to our own and thereby shut the door to the good results that come from humble acceptance without question. As long as we are fearful of what is spoken of in frightening terms as, God's will, we are doubtful whether God's will is good only. We wonder whether he truly knows what is best for us, while we ourselves are so sure of what is best from our human standpoint. If we acknowledge that God is our creator, a loving God, as Jesus taught, we can have no qualms about accepting his will. If God is all good, we can rest assured that his answer will be all good not part good and part bad. If God is all wise, we can give up our human decisions for his spiritual directions without reservation. If God is all love, we can set aside our concern for another's welfare and relax in the assurance that nothing but good can result for our dear one, regardless of what he seems to do humanly to go astray from God's love. God has a perfect answer for every one of his children, for every one of their difficulties in this life. He does not fail. His answer comes directly to you, from within your heart and mind rather than from someone else who advises or counsels you outwardly. Another person may be a channel for helping you find the answer to your prayer, but, still, the answer is your own, direct from God to you. No one else can know what this answer is. It is between you and God. In the same way, you may not know the answer to your loved one's prayer. This too, is a private matter between God and your loved one, and his answer will come to him at just the right time and in just the right way. There is never a delay in spirit, and no answer will come too late. God is always on time, for he is ever present as well as all present. A truth student seeking an answer to a delicate problem in human relationships prayed earnestly about the matter. Although she felt that she knew the right step to take, she hesitated to create out a conflict. As she meditated upon the Father's love and wisdom and ever-presence, the thought came to her, before the question arises the answer is there. Released from further anxiety, unburdened of personal responsibility, this truth student knew that the right words would come forth, the right decision would be made for the good of all concerned. She had her answer and followed through in faith and the results were manifested in harmony and order. Long before the question confronting you arose within your heart the answer was there. Long before the earth was created and its creatures brought forth and man fashioned in the image and likeness of God, God was there in all his love and wisdom and goodness. He still is here, still in your life as your vitality, in your mind as your wisdom and good judgment and guidance, in your affairs as harmony and peace and order happiness and perfection. God has the answer to our problems, for he himself is the answer to every heart's question or desire. He can answer the smallest, most trivial question, and he can answer the biggest, most serious, and complex question, for nothing is too difficult or too easy for God to solve. As the question arises within our hearts, so the answer speaks from within our hearts. The sooner we quiet the clamor of the human self, the demands of the personal, and become still and listen, patient and trusting, the sooner we hear and know the answer within our minds and hearts. The master, tried by every form of negation, confronted by questions and conflicts and doubts similar to ones that beset us today, found his answers through prayer, through turning within in faith, then moving outwardly step by step along the way. When he had prayed in faith he then acted in faith as though the answers already were, and the results were manifested accordingly. His persistence in so doing was not spasmodic or happenstance. 
he desired to persist in truth and he continued to do so regardless of what others thought or said or did. His faith was not based upon outer results but upon inner conviction that came through prayer and the seeking of the Father's will of good. He prayed and listened and found that the answers to the questions concerning sickness and unhappiness were wholeness and perfection and joy, the answers to the questions concerning sorrow and death were peace and happiness and life everlasting, the answers to the questions concerning problems of dissension and fear and hate were love and strength and courage. These answers arose within his heart, not from outer counsel and advice and he went forth to carry out those answers in his words and actions in spite of the scoffing and disbelief of the surrounding multitude. If your heart has called in anguish for an answer to grief or pain or lack, if your thoughts have been in torment over any difficulty concerning yourself or another, take time now to be still and pray once more. Knows that the perfect answer you seek already dwells within your heart and is bringing forth the peace, assurance, and strength you seek the same as it dwelled within the heart of Jesus and brought forth the peace, assurance, and strength that enabled him to rise above all tribulation. Peace and satisfaction are your divine birthright as joined heir with the Christ. Be still and remember this, and remember that you were brought forth to be victor rather than vanquished, overcomer rather than the overcome. As you know this in the stillness of your own heart, a living answer will fire your being with renewed faith cleanse you of the dross of unbelief and reveal the truth. There is an answer, the Father's own to you, his beloved Son. No matter what problem or difficulty you are facing today, God's answer is already on its way to you. In the midst of inharmony or confusion, in the face of fear or grief, remind yourself that God's good, God's answer is already seeking you out. God's help, which comes to us whenever we need it may come through a friend, or it may come in the form of a stabilizing thought, a feeling of increased assurance, a renewal of courage. We do not always know what the channel for our blessing will be, or its method of reaching us, but we may be sure that the help we need in any given situation will reach us without delay. God is the giver of all good. His blessings are never withheld but are poured out continually and abundantly upon us and our lives. Our part is to keep ourselves open and receptive to Him, to keep ourselves ready and willing to receive His good. Whatever your need, whatever your desire supply, health, happiness it comes direct from the one source and it is made manifest for you as you keep your faith centered in God. Are you hurt and unhappy about something or someone? Ask for God's help and then be ready to receive. As you listen in the silence, you will receive God's answer you will receive the uplift, the wisdom, the courage you need. You will find the peace and satisfaction you have longed for, your mind and heart will be filled with confidence. And even as you become an open channel for the blessings of God, you will become a channel of good for the blessing of others. You will become a channel for praise and love, you will become a special messenger to bring happiness and joy to God's children. Remember always that there are blessings for you. Open the door of your heart to receive them. Declare every morning, God has blessings for me today, he has. Prove him now and receive your very own good.